Within my scope of work, this digital transformation, you know, you're digitizing people's work activities, right? And the business that we're in, we have facilities uh, across Western Canada and the United States. You're digitizing the manual, you know, swinging of a valve. And, and that entire OT space is exposed. You have certain industries where it is absolutely imperative, part of regulation for it to be covered, but in many industries, it's not addressed yet. In terms of maturity, there's two things that we're looking at. One is developing a need and desire for our general populace to want to get this capability, right? So as they evolve and move into the digital space, their work, their life gets easier. <laughs> so then there's a compelling case to learn about cybersecurity, which then brings me to my second point. Training is only good until as good as your, your culture. So it needs to be led at all levels from bottom to top. This needs to be a cultural shift, mind shift of the entire organization to make this stick. Because if it doesn't stick, it's only going to be as good as the two or three people in your organization, plus your vendors, right? And I think, you know, the last thing I do want to talk about is this, this tension between, you know, what is uh, a healthy tension between what are the, the controls that you put in place, the tools that you put in place versus the guidance, the culture, the capabilities, the soft things, the administrative controls. Because for mid caps, we can't spend all the money. So what that positive tension is how we keep ourselves safe in this world while running our business in a profitable way. So maturity requires understanding. So you know, to explain to anybody how you manage something, you need a framework from my perspective, right? And we, we use the NIST framework to talk to management, senior management, the board, and, and go through the five pillars of NIST. And part of that, uh, that process is, is I need people, process, and technology in all those five pillars. Uh, and that helps develop that dialogue around people process technology, which really is spend, 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 uh, and, and what it's going to do to defend you using the NIST framework. And that framework helps show our capabilities or lack of, and also helps develop that roadmap, which again, maturity means understanding, right? And capabilities and, and lack thereof and or roadmaps help people understand. And then of course, you know, to, to really understand where I need to expend my effort, uh, again, you need, need a measurement and uh, we a report card, a scorecard. So, you know, so we use a, a risk rating platform, which gives us a report card. Then I can actually sit down with the board and the senior management and talk about where I expend my effort, which really is three areas, right? It really is user behavior, which I, I know Brian and a few others brought up earlier on. Uh, diligence around, and I know Chris brought up diligence around patching, uh, DKIM is your email encrypted, your DNS secure, all those really boring things. That, uh, that have to happen. I mean, the amount of web application headers that don't meet standards today is phenomenal, right? And we see that when we do an acquisition and we do a complete security profile and they haven't got DNS security, they don't have web standards to meet, they don't have SLS, all those things that no one wants to hear about. But again, uh, you know, that diligence is important. That diligence, again, takes people, process, technology. Uh, and then of course the compromised systems uh, where they're the applications we have, right? Uh, unwanted, uh, unwanted traffic against our firewalls, all those. And, and by explaining it that way, you're going to help the organization mature and the dialogue becomes straightforward and the dialogue comes down to spending. And then of course, the barometer is how much do you spend? Will you spend what you need or you spend how to prevent and you look at the dollars loss and you look at the competition and you look at how people rate you and that helps, to, that, that helps redesign that. So that's So we've taken a couple of steps just to ensure that we are in line with our peers in the industry, uh, as you don't want to be the weakest link. So one of the things we do do is we every couple of years, we have an independent third party assessment, which means a third party comes in and looks at our policies and frameworks and assesses against it uh, based on the capability maturity model uh, on the scale from zero to five. And we get a maturity model that says, look, this is where you guys are in each of your services and those services are reviewed. As I mentioned, every couple of years, so you can see the growth and the maturity of those services as you go along. So we do do that as to, and, and that's a good, good check for us as well, because we get compared with other uh, peers in the industry as well, just to see what our peers are, where our peers are and, and where we need to be. I'm actually belong to a couple of industry associations as well that gives us some indicators on 
how well we're doing. And, and it gives us a platform to share the learnings from, from the solutions we have in place and some of the good and bad with the tooling as well. So, so we use that platform not just to, not just to share uh, information about good security practices, but also some of the cyber threats as well. How do you manage those and, and whatnot? So, so that's a good balance as well for me to, to understand and learn from my peers uh, in the industry as well, just to just to see what what industry is doing, what the financial sector is doing, and and get some data points regarding uh, regarding how well my 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 security program is maturing or not. John and and Bobby talked a lot about kind of that continuous evaluation piece piece, which is so so valuable and so important. Uh, what we've learned from the adversary is that we need to constantly shift the priority of our controls to focus on what the attackers are likely to exploit next. It's because the adversary are the ones that define our maturity based on what is coming, i.e. their ability to exploit us and our ability to defend it. Now that forces us to create a path to maturity that is in line and also one step ahead of them. The path cannot diverge and we cannot fall behind. As Ferriel mentioned earlier, we have to prepare with the threat in mind. Like what would the threat look like? So how do we stay on track and one step ahead of the adversary? I don't want to oversimplify this, uh, but we found three key areas that are typically lacking in these approaches. Assess how to stop them, test what is working, and making sure that you test on a frequent basis. I'm going to give you a few anecdotes on how I've seen other companies achieve each one of these. Number one, from an assessment perspective, I've seen companies use multiple disciplines and frameworks that need to be taken into consideration. Like John mentioned, NIST. Um, from a compliance framework perspective, but there's other things like ISO, PCI, CMMC, HIPAA, and so forth. And then also measuring your security partners, as Helen said, making sure that they're hardening, they're continuously hardening their systems and making sure that they're compliant as well. The threats and risks, such as looking at the MITRE attack framework and benchmarks like CIS. So looking at all of this from the overall perspective, and this really allowed them to measure their security posture against their shared understanding of the adversary. Number two, after the assessment, this needs to be tested like the adversary tests you. Most companies wait for an annual pen test or a vulnerability scan, which is not enough. While attackers are continually changing their tactics, companies need to do the same thing with each of their tests. Each test needs to bring something new. If you can't come up with more tests and your defenses are not enough, you now understand your own maturity against the adversary and therefore need to rethink strategy. And the final piece is the frequency. Rather than looking at this on an annual basis, we need to be looking at this from a weekly or monthly basis. Amar mentioned with them talking to their vendors on a weekly basis and seeing what is working. That is, that is critical. They're utilizing their vendors to test and understand the right strategy the right way. And this is, needs to be is how, how it is because your adversary is looking at this from a 24-7 basis. So these three key takeaways really help communicate the impact of existing investments when defining your cyber maturity and will help you understand where you can meet the adversary when you're measuring and improving your cyber posture. My goal is to have some kind of standard implemented which meets the needs of the aviation um, and transport security business. I think some kind of certification gives our partners some level of confidence that our processes are, are have good internal controls and that they are certified to a certain standard. The other thing is to have a playbook ready for when things do happen, right? And I've had to educate my board and I sit on both sides, you know, I educate my board and I'm also on two other boards. And I can tell you that, that the board definitely will lose sleep over this. And, and they are very, very nervous about the cybersecurity issue. So uh, in my roadmap, I think, you know, getting your users involved, training, the weakest link is the human being that will click on something. And you really constantly need reminders to your users, awareness training, and we've made that a recurring training as, as some of our other essential uh, training is uh, available. And, you know, when there's an incident coming up, you know, like when you, when I hear about, you know, when George Floyd was murdered, things like these hackers use current events to get your attention and you click on a link and there you have it. So when, when I get information, I subscribe to newsletters and I hear of new threats, I actually will send out 
um, an email to the whole organization saying, watch out for these things. So, you know, if th things are going to happen, it's a matter of when, when they're going to happen. So I need to be prepared to handle the reputational risk, the compliance risk, and uh, the communication risk. And, and I think how you form your narrative. So these are all steps to mitigation and that's what I look for. What we look for at the board is we wanna make sure that, that our management team understands what the data is that we're protecting that would be so uh, enticing. Where is that data? And again, obviously, how do we protect it? So we go back to basics, asking those questions to make sure that everyone understands what the data is and where is it. I'll just sidebar for a bit. Cyber, uh, we talked about cyber insurance. That's important to boards. Boards uh, look to that as a help when it comes to some budgets. Uh, but I also talk that I, I chair a risk committee for one of our boards, and this, again, is on our agenda all the time. And we specifically talk about what's been mentioned what are our benchmarks? How do we stack up against our peers? How do we stack up against competitors? I mean, just how do we stack up in general? So benchmarking is really important. Uh, I, what I've heard today was even more interesting. It's not good enough to do it once a year. Uh, we need to benchmark more frequently. We need to assess more frequently. And so a lot of metrics go into what I'm looking for at the board. We, we demand a lot of metrics from our team. And again, that could come from the team internally or from some of our partners, but, but metrics uh, are, are something critical to us. And then we talked about training and firewalls are great. They help prevent from the external, but internal training continues to be a challenge. And back when I was a CIO many years ago, internal training was a challenge and it continues to be. And I think it's because the actors are changing and, and, and the threat is getting, uh, is escalating. And so internal training continues to be a challenge of how do we get it right? How do we do it without overdoing it, without overkilling our employees, because then it just becomes not effective. So I, I can't underscore the training piece of, of how I think that's our first line of defense. And that's what uh, we're looking for at the board level. Certainly, I know my CISO would say, you know, he was always the last to go when it came to presenting the strategic plan. And it's flipped for us. It's at the top of our list now. It's at the top of our priorities because you're just never done, right? You've never finished funding. You're never finished your programs. There's always something more to do and some something uh, new to be thinking about. Uh, it's on every update to the board. It's probably the first thing to all of the, the conversation we've had here. It's probably the first thing that uh, our board is interested in hearing about in updates from our data and technology team. So some things you're going to expect on our roadmap, that ever diligent focus on resilience, the need for continuous training, those regular fishing exercises are, are part of our DNA now and follow-ups with the pointers on how to detect when something doesn't look quite right. Having a response plan, we've talked about that at length today, and using those peer and industry benchmarks to gauge a maturity level, a gap assessment, and what you'll prioritize in your roadmap. So frameworks like NIST, CIS, um, security controls are all the things that we're thinking about. Two particularly that are really important for us and hitting the top of those priorities this year are around vendor supply chain risk. We're all relying more heavily on our cloud service providers or managed services providers, and we, we need to ensure that they are upholding themselves to the same standards. And understanding what emerging threats are in that cyber landscape. It's, it's true, our adversaries are constantly working and they're ahead of us, so where we can anticipate what is coming next, one of the examples that we're thinking about is quantum, right? So what new risks do does quantum computing pose for us and how near is it on the horizon that we need to be thinking about the vulnerabilities or new risks that may emerge with quantum computing? So that's, that's an example of one of the specific technologies that we're thinking about as an emerging risk. <laughs>